Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be continuing the Calda Mechanics series and we're going to start off with problem number 9 and this is still in the static section. I hope I hope that I'll try to get some more time so that we can get out of the static section and get into some more dynamics since of course statics is fun but you can only uh, enjoy it so much. But let's go into problem 9. A light wire is bent into a right angle and a heavy ball is attached to the bend. The wire is placed onto supports with height h and horizontal difference a, horizontal distance a. Find the position of the wire in its equilibrium. Express the position as the angle between the bisector as the angle between the bisector of the right angle and the vertical. Neglect any friction between the wire and the supports. The supports have little grooves between all motion in the plane of the wire and the figure. So first, um, one of the most important parts here is going to be this right here, right angle. So right angle means that this is right here. And what does that actually mean? Well, the ends of these two wires are fixed at uh, these two ends. And the location of the rod, uh, the location of the ball can be anywhere while making this a right angle. And that locus of points is actually simply just a circle because if you take the diameter of the circle, Anywhere you put it here, it's going to be a 90 degree angle. And this is just like um, pretty easy geometry, which you should probably know if you're watching this channel. And with that, we can actually uh, investigate this a little bit more with a bit of a diagram that I prepared beforehand. And take a look at that. So I think you can probably interpret what these two are. Um, these are just the supports that are here and here and this is the ball here so we know the ball can be anywhere on this um, on this circle here well it's not going to go above but it's going to be somewhere on this circle here and where is it actually going to be well if you put some ball onto some like circle here it's just going to go to the bottom of the very bottom of the circle right and this is the vertical right here and this is the angle bisector and the very bottom of the circle is just if it's going to be the vertical since that's how the circle is oriented. So it's going to actually go directly to this vertical here. And so we're really left to find the angle between these two lines here. This is the angle bisector. But since these two points are fixed on a circle, the angle bisector is just going to go to the midpoint of the arc between these two points here. So we can actually freely move this to find this angle here because this point is fixed and we're just trying to find the angle between these and divide by two with inscribed angle theorem. And from that, we, what we can do is actually try to orient this so that this becomes the diameter here. This becomes the diameter of the circle. And if it becomes the diameter of the circle, it's actually quite easy. And I'm going to get rid of the diagram now so you can actually work on it. But now we know it's going to go to the bottom of the circle and we're really finding the angle between the midpoint between uh, the two marked points here and and the vertical. So let's uh, draw our situation here. Oops, um, that's a bit steep. But we have this circle here, and this is the line between the two marked points. And right here is going to be the vertical. And we're trying to find the angle between this point, these two points here. This is the midpoint of the arc. So what we can do here is just take this um through take this diameter here. And the angle between these two is just going to be the angle between these two, since it's just a rotation. And what and if, it might be easier to see it if you see it as the angle between these two here, which is equivalently the angle between these two. And the angle between these two can just be found because that's h and the distance here is a. So this angle here, let's call alpha, is equal to arctan h over a. And now you know that. So, and the angle bisector we already said was here. And by inscribed angle theorem, then it's going to be half alpha equals one half arctan 
h over a. So I don't know if you guys um, like that problem. It's more of a math problem than a physics, pr physics problem, really. The only uh, physics part is finding out that the ball lies in here, which I showed with the diagram. Let's move on to problem number 10. Problem number 10. A rod with length L is hinged to a ceiling with height H less than L. Underneath a board, underneath a board is being dragged on the floor. The rod is meant to block the movement um, the, of the board in one direction while allowing it to move in the opposite direction. What condition should be fulfilled for it to do its job? The coefficient of friction is mu sub 1 between the board and the rod and mu sub 2 between the board and the floor. So, this might be a little bit, the, tricky, the trickiest part of understanding this problem is, well, what does it mean for it to not move? But obviously, if you just use your intuition here, um, the, the direction that it's supposed to be able to move is going to be this direction. And the direction it's supposed to be stopping is in that direction. So we just don't worry about going in this direction. And let's just think about it going this direction. So if it's able to go in this direction, then well, since this is abs this is blocking its motion, the this rod would have to this rod would have to swing this way. Let me draw it bigger here. Sorry, that's really not straight. Um, but if we were to have it here, and this was able to continue moving in this direction, because the height actually restricts the motion, what what would need to happen? is this would need to swing this way the hinge would need to swing this way so for it to be for it to do its job is if we just analyze forces on this rod the rod has to be pushed this way and because if it's pushed this way then this won't be able to move because it would start breaking the rod or whatever so the only force we actually need to consider on this is actually just going to be the friction force here sorry that's not the friction force the friction force and the normal force and this is an idea we used a lot in episode one and these two at maximum are going to point at an angle here of r tan mu so basically if we want there to be a net force in this direction we need this r tan mu To be greater than alpha that way this force can point to the right side of the rod so we want alpha is less than or equal to r tan mu and well mu in this case is mu sub 1 so alpha is less than or equal to r tan mu sub 1 that means mu sub 1 is greater than or equal to tangent alpha and we can find tangent alpha from geometry um, we have that the length of the rod is L and this height is H and this is alpha. So this is square root of L squared minus H squared by Pythagorean theorem. So tangent alpha is equal to square root L squared minus H squared over H. So mu sub 1, our condition for this problem is mu sub 1 rather than equal to root L squared minus h squared over h. Okay, let's move on to problem number 11, our last one for today. And this one is actually pretty easy if you know how to, if you know the techniques behind it. Problem 11, four long and four half as long rods are hinged to each other forming three identical rhombi. One end of the contraption is hinged to a ceiling, the other end is attached to a weight of mass m. The hinge next to the weight is connected to the hinge above by a string. By a string, find the tension in the string. So this might seem very difficult. There's just rods everywhere, and we don't know how to deal with them. But the principle we're going to use here is the principle of virtual work. And I think I mentioned this previously in a video. But if we look at the energy, energy versus x. Then the principle of virtual work tells us that the static, um, not static, but at equilibrium, the 
small changes won't change the energy. It's going to be tangent because you can think of it like a ball rolling and finding its lowest energy because that's how things work. And from there, what we can do is move this mass a little bit. Let's move, if we move the mass a little bit downward, and we're going to have to say that if we move it a little bit, then the energy should not change. And there's going to be potential energy change and change in the work, change due to work done by the string. And so we can equate those two together and then we'll be able to solve for the tension in the string. So let's suppose the mass moved down by some amount dx. Then the amount of energy lost, um, the amount of uh, work that gravity does is mg dx. And that's positive work. And the work done by tension is gonna be negative since it's gonna be pulling up on the mass as it moves down. So we need to find so we're going to set it equal to t times the amount the tension the mass moves sorry the amount the contact point of the tension moves and so you might say that the um the string actually moves the same amount as the mass dx right but that's actually not true because the tension is not actually attached to the mass the tension is in fact attached to in between these two hinges here and so the work done is going to be in elongating them. And so by symmetry, each of these hinges, each of these triangular sections are going to increase by the same amount. For example, if it was like this, these triangular sections are all gonna somehow move a tiny bit more like this. And it's gonna move the same amount because it's symmetric. And that means each of these are going to move by dx over three because they all three of them with the same amount and multiplying by three is equal to dx, the total movement of n. So that means the work done in increasing the string in elongating the string is going to be t times dx over three. And this gives canceling out the dx is multiplying the three over t is equal to three mg. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and Thanks for watching.